So the first thing that you're going to want to do is find your size on the pattern. And the back of the envelope does give us some clues as to the direction that we are going to go in in terms of size. So if you see here, um, this new look pattern, and I think a lot of new look patterns have six sizes in one, which is really nice because you have the range from a size eight all the way up to a size 18. In terms of bust, that's 31 and a half inches all the way up to 40 inches. So you really get a good range of sizes for someone who is pear-shaped or um, hourglass figure where you have to grade in between sizes a lot. Um, this range is really helpful. So so right off the bat, I really like that. Um, okay, so you need to know your own personal measurements. And for me, um, that is 37 and a half bust, 33 waist, and 47 hip. So you can see I am a bit of an hourglass, maybe even more of a pair, um, where my hip is much larger than my waist and bust. And these measurements in this box here are all kind of a... A guesstimate or a suggestion for you. We'll find out how to get to the specific size of the actual pattern piece in a second, but you always want to start here because it's going to give you kind of a good ballpark to go on. So I'm a 37 and a half, like I said, so you'll go to the bust measurement here and go across and you'll see that 37 and a half falls between a 14 and a 16. So I just go ahead and write down 14, 16. Then you go to your waist, I'm a 33, and if you go across, 33 is technically not even on the chart. <laughs> so I write down an 18. And then the hip measurement, um, it is marked here, but it really doesn't matter for a pattern like this because the skirt is so full and so big, you'll never really need to worry about your hip measurement here, which is why I happen to love fit and flare dresses so much. <laughs> um, okay, so then you wanna try and find the actual um, pattern measurements. And this is the measurement of the finished garment. Um, whenever they take out any consideration for size and it's just from seam line to seam line. Um, so on New Look Patterns, they actually list garment measurements down here at the bottom. So we have our bust for ABCD and you'll see, so I am 37.5. So we want to go across and again, it's gonna fall in between two sizes. However, this time I'm falling between a 12 and a 14. And that is very common for your actual garment measurements to fall a size below. So I think that just for the muslin, I'm gonna start with a size 14. Now, for the, for the waist, it gets a little bit complicated. On some patterns, they will have the waist measurements written on the pattern piece with like, it's like a circle with a plus sign through it, um, and they'll have all the sizes and what the actual garment measurements of that waistline are. On these new look pieces, however, they don't have those measurements provided to us, unfortunately. But it's not too, too difficult to find the waist measurements of these pieces. I like, so you're, so by looking at the front, you see that the bottom of the waistband is going to be where your waistline should hit. Um, so we know that it's the bottom of this pattern piece that is going to be your waistline. If you wanted to get really, you know, precious about it, you could measure your 5-8 seam line. Uh, where did my pencil go? And, you know, you mark it on the pattern piece. But this is just the muslin. It doesn't have to be super, super accurate because we're going to end up making some adjustments after we make the muslin anyways. So I take my curve ruler, which this thing is amazing. If you don't have one, I would highly look into getting one. I'll link in the description box below where you can find it, but I love this thing. There's a smaller one and a larger one. It comes in one pack. They're great. Um, okay, so you want to start with the zero measurement and you start at your seam line and you just run the ruler all the way across following the seam line until you get to your 
the size that you think you're probably going to make, which for me is an 18. So I'm getting roughly nine and three quarter inches. So that's the midriff front for AB. So if you see on my notes page here, um, I ended up writing down front for A and B, and then I took the same measurement using the same technique for the midriff back, all views, and the midriff front for um, C and D. Same, same method using the same ruler, and coincidentally, I ended up getting nine and three quarters for all of them. That's not super common, I don't guess, but it's not freaking me out. It's not so weird that I feel like I did something wrong. Um, so then you wanna take, so all of these are done on the fold. So you have seam allowances here and no seam allowances here. So you wanna take that nine and three quarter measurement, you wanna double it because you're on the fold, and then you wanna remove the seam allowances. And when you do all of that, you get 18.25. Then you do all of that again for the back and you get 18.25. You add them together and you get 36.5. So that is your measurement for size 18 in the waist, just about. Again, I'm not being super precious about this because I know we're making a muslin and we're gonna have some room to play with. So then I decide that, okay, well, let me see. 36.5 is actually three and a half inches larger than my actual waist measurement. And that seems like a lot of ease for a waist. So um, I went ahead and did 16 as well. And you just take your pattern and you can do this same method again and measure what a 16 is, or you can just come over with your regular straight ruler and you'll see the difference between 18 and 16 is half an inch. So you can do all of this measurement again, or you can just take half an inch, multiply it by the four seam allowances that we have, two for the front and two for the back, and um, that will be two inches, so you know there's gonna be a two inch differential between these two. Or you can see here, I did all the math for you, and it proved out 34 and a half. So, you know, a my actual waist, 33, um, one and a half inches for a waist measurement might be a little bit tight. So I'm feeling like I'm in between these two. You have two options here. You can either go the smaller route and just know that you have those five eighths seam allowances to play around with. Usually that equates to three and a quarter inches. If you went all the way down to just a quarter inch seam allowance, you would have three eighths of an inch to play around with times four. So that's, that's kind of a lot. Um, so you have one and a half inches to play with, which is a lot. So this is really three, 34.5 um, to 36 you have that much room to play with. Um, or you can just say, you know what, I'm just gonna make the larger size. It's easier to take out than it is to add. Um, and you know that you're gonna have to um, grade down your waist seam allowances whenever you make your muslin. Two schools of thought, take whichever one you feel more comfortable with. Um, for me, I think that I am going to make the uh, size 16. That's kind of from practice, um, and also just like I like, I know I like a tighter um, waist line than a looser one. So I'm gonna go with a size 16. For reference, I went ahead and measured out everything for you guys because we're all in this together. Um, so I have the um, waist line measurements for a size 14, which is 32 and a half, a 12 is 30.5, a 10 is 29, and an eight is 28. So jot those down. Again, this is not super precious. If you're not making a muslin, I would, do your own measurements and not trust mine. The last thing I want is for you guys to comment and say, my fabric is ruined because I made a size based on what you told me to do. Th this is only applicable if you're making a muslin. I wanna be super, super clear about that. Um, so I will leave these measurements down in the description box below also so that you you know, if you didn't if you didn't have a chance to write them down, you can reference them there. So for me, it looks like I'm going to make a bust of 14 and a waist of 16, and that is super easy to grade between um, the bust and the waist because again, we have all these ranges of sizes. So you would just simply blend this line here with this line here using a straight angle, something along these lines here. Um, so you have your bodice front. This is view A and B, which actually has a princess seam. So you gotta kind of 
visualize with me. These two go together here. And you can see from the pattern um, model that the uh, top of the midriff is very, very high on the waist, almost like an ampere waist right below the uh, bust. So I, I'm not going to grade out on the bust from a 14 to a 16 because I just feel like it's going to be too big here and then be fitted down here. So I'm still going to make a 14 in the arm side, a 14 in the bottom of the uh, bodice, a 14 in the top of the midriff, and then, then grade out to a 16. That way you get, you know, that 14 out to a 16 and it fits at the waist. That's where the waist measurement is taken. So on these pieces here on the side seam, I am going to just cut a straight 14. And then whenever you bring the midriff piece in, the size 14 of the bodices, once they're put together with the princess seam, um, will match up with the size 14 of the midriff. And then I grade out, like I said, from 14 to a 16 on the midriff piece. And then I cut the skirt at a size 16 um, so that the midriff size 16, the bottom of the midriff, will match up with the top of the skirt. Um, and then that'll get you your perfect um, waistline there that should fit. And then again, the skirt flares out so much. I, I can't imagine, um, I just can't imagine everyone's waist, I mean, everyone's hip not fitting fitting in there. There is one situation where that might apply and that is if you have very, very narrow hips, you might consider grading down, but I think mostly everyone is going to want this, you know, super elegant fitted top and super flare dress, no matter what your hip situation is going on down here. So, that is the plan for me. Um, I do have some tips for sewing uh, muslins, so let me clean up my space here. I'll get those tips together and then I'll be right back. Okay, so this is muslin fabric. It is a very inexpensive, tightly woven, usually 100% cotton, like material. It's not pretty. It's not meant to be worn out. Like it's just meant to test the fit of a garment. Um, I've seen it, oh gosh, maybe $3 a yard, $4 a yard, something like that. So you can definitely buy this um, and make your muslin out of this. No problem. But I do have some other tips for you um, if you don't want to do that. And my, the one I use most often is to take scraps from previous um, projects and use those as my muslin. So you guys know, I mean, you usually have like these pretty big pieces of fabric um, that you can use. I mean, look how large this one is. It's gonna take up the whole screen here. So I could easily get, you know, one of the bodices um, and probably uh, the waistband um, out of just this piece. Um, but you know, you have bigger pieces from other things. The only caution that I have for you about using scraps is you really want to use scraps that mimic whatever your final garment is going to be like. So don't use knit scraps, you know, don't use like something really lightweight if we're making, you know, this structured fit and flare dress like we are. Try and stick with that. It doesn't have to be like, you don't have to use a brocade scrap for a brocade dress, but you want to just kind of keep it in the same vein. Um, that way it, you know, holds its shape the same way that your final garment will. And then the third option I have for you is actually to go to your local Goodwill, Salvation Army, thrift shop, whatever, um, and look for these dresses that they sell there inevitably that have very few seam lines. I mean, look at this. This is just like basically a very long tunic. Um, and outside of the um, placket and collar, like the rest of it is just fabric yardage, but you can find dresses that are like huge, like gigantic, um, like 2XL, 4XL, you know, ones that are very, very large and um, make your muslin out of that. 
The third option, or the, what number are we on? Fourth option that I have is to actually make your muslin out of the lining that you're going to end up lining the garment with. So this is a very cheatery type of method. Um, it's a shortcut because you're essentially already, you're skipping ahead and you're making um, the lining for your finished garment. Um, I would only recommend doing that though if you feel you're like you're really close um, to based on the measurements that we went over earlier if you feel like you're not going to have that many fit issues because you can't really go back. Um, you can't really make major alterations if that's what you need to do. You can only kind of nip and tuck um, from the lining and again you're not truly going to be able to assess it because the lining is going to be a little bit lighter than our finished garment but it is free it, it will depending on how you look at it maybe our sewist math <laughs> will tell us that it's free because you're going to put it in the garment anyways but um, I just wanted to give you guys some options other than just running out and buying muslin but you can absolutely do that um if you don't have any though, there are a few other options for you. One more thing about using fabric scraps for your muslin, you have to make sure the scraps have a selvage edge so that you can still cut on the grain line. If your scraps came from the center of your yardage and you don't have a selvage anymore, I don't really know what you're gonna use those for other than like projects where um, grain lines don't matter, like zipper pouches and stuff like that but yeah you want to make sure you have um, a selvage edge and you still want to honor you know the grain line and cut it out as if it were a full piece of fabric okay so I am working on cutting out my muslin from some scrap fabrics and ironically I think these are actually gonna look really good together I ended up using um, this blue and this print um, probably could have done something a little more creative than a muslin with those two but whatever what can you do um i'm jumping on here really quickly because i wanted to point out that on the bodice pieces for a and b you're going to see that the pattern pieces only have the grain line running selvage to selvage and that is because the pattern envelope um the pattern is drafted for a border print this isn't just done for example, this is actually how the pattern is drafted and how the instructions are laid out. So if you're not using a border print, in my opinion, I think you should mark the grain line that you typically see on a pattern, which is one that runs from cut edge to cut edge where the um, grain line will be parallel to the selvage line. So all I did is took um, this little line that they provided here, I got my little square ruler and I, you know, lined up the horizontal line with a, a mark on the ruler and then drew a long grain line so that the two make a perpendicular little mark. Um, and this is going to be your grain line if you aren't using a border print fabric. If you're using border print fabric, the borders are usually printed on the selvage sides, each one, and they kind of grow in like this. Um, so that's why they have you do that, because you'll need to cut your pieces so that the, you know, the bottom of the, the border that runs along the selvage kind of crawls up your body into the bodice. So I thought that some of you might see that and be a little bit confused or think that it's a misprint or something, and just wanted to point out that that's why that grain line is turned sideways, and here's how easy it is to um, turn it the other way. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Since I'm not using a border print, I'm going to cut all of these um, with the typical grain line that you see. All right, so I've got all my muslin pieces cut out for both bodice versions. Um, this is the v-neck and this is the wrap front. Um, I did want to say I'm not going to muslin the sleeves simply because I'm not making the any either of my final garments in 
like with sleeves so I'm not going to do that but if you're making the sleeved version you should definitely definitely muslin um, a sleeve and attach it um, so I'll go ahead and muslin these two I typically muslin multiple bodices no matter what pattern I'm making like this butterick one um, has this sleeved raglan version as well as this wrap front ruffly version and so I will muslin both of those um I mean that's not a great example but you know what I mean so um it's like I call it bulk muslining and then I'll keep both of these muslins I'll either um go ahead and stuff them down into the pattern envelope or keep them like in a baggie together so that when I go to make the other version if I weren't going to make them you know both of them right away I have the other version to try on to fit um I also think it's good to hold on to your muslins because our, well not everybody's but my body changes I feel like um fairly often <laughs> I've had some health issues so my weight is like fluctuating so I like to keep um the muslins to try on if I ever make another version of the dress I'll have the muslin from before that I can compare to my current um measurements and body shape and all of that so uh, just another little tip I wanted to throw in there so I'll um sew these up and then we'll see how they look so here we go. This is my bodice uh, muslin for view C and D, the wrap version of New Look 6526. Um, I have obviously sewn the wrap pieces together, added the midriff front, and then I turned under seam allowances on the midriff where the skirt gets attached, on the bodice front, and on the arm side just so I could see how everything would look as if it were finished. Um, I have not attached the skirt because again so long as the skirt fits in the waist there's so much ease and fullness to that skirt that it really just you don't need to make a full muslin of the skirt. So assessing this there are a few things that I am noticing. First off I think that the front bodice is looking really good. Um, some things you want to look for are this bust dart that's right here. You want to make sure that that goes, you know, up to the apex of your bust and not beyond and not in a funky direction or um, not even too short. Um, you want to make sure it goes right to your bust line as it should. Um, another thing you want to look for is front gaping here. If you have any like, you know, any gaping at all in the front or even in the center front sometimes you'll see that it can get really big in the front here um, that is an indication that you might have chosen a bodice front piece that is or bodice size that is too big and maybe you need to do a small bust adjustment or go up a size um, you'd have to adjust that there um, something that i'm noticing on mine is my natural waist is i mean it is right at where this folded edge is hitting. Um, so that is good. You wanna make sure wherever your body naturally, like when you bend over, um, can you see? When you bend over, that's where you want that seam line to go. And you can see mine is hitting almost exactly perfectly, which makes me very happy. Um, you wanna check your shoulders and you wanna make sure that the shoulder line is you know, straight on top of your shoulder, not too far forward or too far back. Um, and you also wanna check the arm size and see if they are too high or too low for you. Um, mine do feel a little bit tight um, through here. I don't feel like I have a ton of room, but also it's not so tight that it's uncomfortable. So I think I'm just gonna use the seam allowances that are there and maybe let this out like a quarter of an inch on each side, which as you know, would buy you like half an inch on each side. So it still can be very roomy. In terms of the back, a little hard for me to see. I did install a zipper um, because it's just me and I don't have anybody to pin my bodice for me, but I think the back looks really good. It's very flat. There's no pooling going on. Um, there's nothing pulling, you know, up here. Um, when you attach the shoulder, when you, if you're making the version with the sleeves, 
you might notice some different things. Sleeves can add a whole other element to this. The sleeves can cause this to pull if it's too small or cause your back to wrinkle if it's too small. But if you're going sleeveless, it's a little bit more forgiving in the fit department. So in general, I think that I am really, really happy with this. Um, I think that this is good to go for me outside of just at the very, very top of the um, side seam, letting that out a little bit. So I'm going to make A and B now and show you what that looks like and assess the fit of that one as well. Okay, here we are with the other version of the bodice. This is A and B with the lovely V neckline. Um, some things that I wanted to point out about this one are that this is very wide. Um, normally my bra strap would come like somewhere around there. Um, so that might be something to consider making these straps wider so they come in more and then blend into this. But at the same time, I kind of really love this really open, beautiful collarbone neckline area. Um, I don't feel like this is too low, although it is a little bit cleavagey. So if you are more full busted and you have like a deeper cleavage, you might want to raise this, but I kind of like it. Um, I am having some gaping issues. This might be TMI for a lot of you, but um, this happens a lot on the necks. And it could be that this stretched out while I was pressing it. Um, so I need to go check it against the um, original pattern piece to make sure that the measurement along this seam line is the same as the pattern piece. If they are, then it's a very simple fix because we have a center front seam. You just need to pinch out um, a little bit from the front. And it looks like the pinching out would equate to maybe three eighths inch pinch. <laughs> um, so that's about three quarters of an inch um, in total removing. So when you do that, I think that A, it feels a little bit better and B, it looks a lot better too. So let's go ahead and pin that out. There we go. And you can see that fixes any problems that you have there. Um, another thing with this bodice that unfortunately is hard to see with this zebra print, but there are princess seams running along here. And you just wanna make sure that those cross over the apex of your bust, very similarly to how that dart did in version C and D. Um, and if they do, you're good to go. Um, another thing that I don't think I mentioned with the other version is that this seam line needs to sit underneath your bust. So when you have the skirt and the weight of the skirt attached here, um, you need to make sure this is at the bottom of your bust. If this is somewhere up here, like I see this in ready to wear all the time and I just want to tell those people, there's a better way. It doesn't have to cut you off like mid boob. Um, if it's up this, this high, then you need more room in the cuffs and you need to probably do some kind of full bust adjustment at the very least lowering this however much you need to lower it. But on me, since I have a very average <laughs> size bust, um, probably the only thing that's average out of my body, um, it's fitting really well. And then again, with the seam line, when you bend over the waist seam where the skirt attaches, again, um, it hitting right where it needs to hit. Something else that's kind of interesting about this is that the arms on this one feel great. Um, I don't feel like I need to let out these arms at all. So that could be because the wrap was doing something or I, I really don't know. I, there, I mean, obviously are separate pattern pieces, maybe because this one has the princess seams, it's sitting lower. I'm not sure. I didn't do anything different. I still cut the same size and I'm not going to make any changes to the upper side seam on this one. So maybe that's a case for why you should muslin all the versions of a dress. Um, even if you've already made one version, you should still muslin the other one. Um, on the back, again, everything looks really good across the back. Um, there's no pooling. Um, there's no pulling really, except for um, right here. And that could just be because the um, 
arm side seam is not pressed under there so I think that that curve is not clipped and so that is what is pulling that so I'm not too concerned about that um, but again with the weight of the skirt um, everything's going to look really really good what do you guys think so I'm very happy with the muslins I feel like getting off on the right foot with the measurements will really help you succeed in the fit department um, so take that take your time with that take that part really seriously and then all of this should go a lot smoother so what is next for us next week I feel like I should calm down here <laughs> next week we are going to cover um, how to construct these bodices. So if you watched this muslin video today and you're like, yeah, but I don't know how to make that, fear not, Give do all the measurement part and then when it gets to the sewing of the muslin part, just give it another week and next week we'll cover how to construct the bodices so you will have that all taken care of. Um, but if you know how to construct uh, basically pleats and darts, and straight seams, you should be good to go on constructing these. Um, I will have some tips next week um, for constructing them out of your fashion fabric. Um, so tune in for that. In the meantime, don't forget to follow um, the Everyone's Progress on the uh, Facebook group. I will have a link in the description box for that. And then as you start to make your muslins, I think it would be super cool if everybody posted theirs to that group. Um, that way everybody can be providing feedback on the fit that you're getting. If you have questions, um, you won't just have to wait on me. You'll be able to get feedback from the entire community of the Royal Wedding Sew Along, which would be super, super fun. Um, and if you're posting anywhere on social media outside of that group, make sure to use the hashtag Royal Wedding Sew Along. So all of that said, I have a ton of information um, that I have sprinkled throughout this video in the description box. Please check that out and leave comments if you have any other questions and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!